Hi, this is Gail from Bernina of Naperville, and I'm reading up a little bit here on armadillos because that's what we're going to make this month for our rainbow rainforest. So, you know, we thought it might not have gotten any cuter than the sleepy sloth. Am I right? But guess what? I think that this armadillo might actually give it a, a run for its money there. So armadillos, ironically, are actually related to sloths and anteaters. Now, is an anteater and an aardvark the same thing? I don't know, maybe you can Google it. But nonetheless, I've learned a lot of cool things about armadillos. For instance, they are now in Illinois. There's a, been a few armadillo sightings in Illinois. Now, they're not really that much of a nuisance because, you know, they don't like really hunt anything. They're just kind of like this little cute armored thing. And by the way, Armadillo means little armored one, which I also think is just super cute. So that's keratin that makes up their shell. And it's just, it's really hard, kind of like a turtle or like our fingernails is what it feels like when they're babies. But, um, but there's a lot of like weird things I found out about armadillos. For instance, they are the only mammal that spreads leprosy. So I don't know if you wanna like curl up next to one or whatever, but you know one thing I can relate to with the armadillo is that they like to sleep for 16 hours at a time. I mean, I too would do that if, if I didn't have a store to run and videos to make and all of those things. <laughs> they also eat insects. So I also think that's a total plus for them because I don't like bugs. They freak me out. Speaking of predators, well, what, what, who, who would want to chase and kill a defenseless little armored armadillo? Coyotes. So once again, don't get your coyote next to your armadillo. And thank goodness that we don't need to make any coyotes for this quilt because then I would be angry. Oh, I, you know how you see an armadillo in a cartoon and, you know, it'll get scared and curl up into a ball and bounce around the place. Well, not many of them do that. Most of the ones with the smaller bands will do that because then that way they can curl up. I mean, they do curl up in a ball, some of the, the species of them in uh, South America, but it's rare to actually find one here in the States that will curl up into a ball. There is a screaming hairy armadillo and this one literally screams like crazy to warn off predators. Well, I think that's kind of funny. I scream to ward off predators too. I think I have a lot in common with armadillos, honestly. They love the water. They, um, there is a giant armadillo and this one is um, the giant armadillo, Priodontes maximus. This guy can go from 45 pounds to 130 pounds and it looks a little bit like a Pokemon character. I'm not sure I would want to encounter that, but now that we know all of the things that we need to know about our cute little armadillo friends, this little quilt is gonna to go together totally easily. So the first thing that I wanna remind you about this is you literally need to label, label, label as always, especially, you know, keeping track of those leaf units and making sure that one is going, that they're turned the right way and everything. So that's the one thing. But then another thing with it is you wanna make sure that you are, maybe it's time to do a seam gauge with your machine again. So, so cut four one and a half inch strips by six inches sew them together with what you think is a quarter of an inch, press, measure, and if it is more than four and a half inches, your seam allowance is too skinny, and if it is less than four and a half inches, then your seam allowance is too large. So do that because the little bands on the armadillo block this month, there's lots of little seams in there, and it's just always good practice. Plus, don't forget, I have this handout available for you and I've taken that handout and I've broken down just simply for you the little armadillo units and what their measurements are so you can kind of measure as you go along to stay on track. So the armadillo, like all of the other critters, have leaves and the leaves for the armadillo is the succulents like this with the brighter yellow from the armadillo kit and then this is the second. So this would be R P R S L P L S one, and these are the R P R S L P L S twos. 
All right, and then of course in the handout, I kind of break it down for you how many of each of those units that you need to make. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and get started with the cutting and the making of these leaves. You've seen me make them a million times, so by the magic of video, boom. All right, so leaves are done, leaves are labeled. Now it's time to just go through our instructions and cut for our cute little armadillo. Just so you know, the reason why I like to include some of these handouts um, is part of the construction after you do the stitch and flip, and we've all gotten that by now, but it's just kind of keeping on track for sizing. So for instance, our little armadillo head is five and a half by eight and a quarter, and so I just always want to kind of do a wellness check as we build, particularly when there's lots of seams and when we're dealing with this linen, which is sometimes a little bit wiggly than the regular quilting cotton. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing a quick little recap of what your assignment is for this month, making the cute little armadillo. Uh, next month, we're actually going to meet the toucan. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to see some of our tutorials or you want to see all the different happenings going on at Bernina of Naperville, check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. See ya.